What's good, Black Star Podcast? Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Jay. And guys, I want to talk to you about a video that's been circulating the, circulating the internet. And it's about a lady that's about to turn 40. She has 40 and she has four kids. And um, she's complaining about how her one of her friends told her that she's a, she's a leftover woman. And she's complaining about how she's not a leftover woman because she's only had four relationships and that's all this and that. Basically trying to um, basically trying to say that she's not used goods. So what sparked this nice truck by the way. What sparked this is a lot of women believe that they still have a lot of value when it comes to being in a relationship with a man that they have a lot of value to offer a man even if they have kids now mind you this woman is 40 years old geriatric 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 pregnancy happens when a late when a woman is 35 so she's not giving you no more kids let's just just be frank about that she's not going to give you no more kids She's going with you to. She's basically looking for a stepfather, in the words of Kevin, in the words of KS. She's looking for a stepfather, and the thing about it is, is too. She's talking about how she's a multimillionaire. She's got a. She's got a very successful business. She's got um, a high rise. Uh, she lives in a high rise condo or whatever, and shit. So, and she wears all this. Uh, High, high brand, high booty, bougie ass stuff. But what she failed to realize is she's a liability. Here's why: Crimson Cure said it best. Everybody knows that when you come into when you come into a substantial amount of money and you build yourself up, that high class like Fendi, Gucci, all that stuff. A lot of the, a lot of rich people don't buy that stuff. It's more it's more on the lines of they're offered this stuff to promote on their social medias so that they can get people in a lower class to buy that stuff. That's where they make all their money in. The lower class wanting their stuff and not understanding uh, finances. So um, this woman was basically bragging about how she drives all these nice cars. How she lives, how she's a multi-million, not multi-millionaire, and now she has this business and stuff. But she failed to realize that that, in a nutshell, means nothing to men. Here's why: a, men don't get access to your money like that. We we don't we don't we don't we don't even get to touch your money. Your money is your money, and my money is your money. It's basically, that's the point. So she failed on that note. And then she also failed to realize that a lot of men will see her as a liability because she's wearing all that high class stuff, all the high dollar stuff, and it loses value over time. See, she she stuck on she stuck on the point of I'm buying all this stuff, but she doesn't actually understand that that stuff has no value. It has no value at all. The value comes in: Are you? Can you give me children? A legacy? Can you give me peace? Can or can you be my helpmate? That's where the value comes in. And she doesn't have any value because she's stuck on this. I'm, I have this. I have that. I have this and that. This and that, and all this bullshit. But bam, that doesn't mean anything. And another question. Why is it that you ladies feel that the only thing that a man has has to accept that that the only thing that you have to bring to a relationship is your money and your body? I've never heard one woman, one Western woman say, well, one modern woman, I should say. I've never heard one modern woman say, I bring cook, I can cook, I can clean, I bring 
femininity, I bring cooperation, I bring respect, I bring um, love, I bring um, the ability to be able to raise a family, I bring wife duties, uh, wife uh, skills, I bring, um, I bring just just that stuff that that will make a man want to choose you. Choose you. I bring femininity. They, they, they never say anything about that. But they're always talking about, oh, I bring my money. I bring this this coochie. I bring um, just stuff that doesn't really matter to anybody. Sure, you got a, sure you got coochie. Sure you got, you got, um, sure you got your money. But outside of that, what else are you offering men? And the thing about it is, is too, they're so conceited and delusional that they they don't even realize that that's not even what men want. And here's the here's the crux of the issue too. A lot of these ladies will listen to women that have no relationship. Instead of listening to what the men are saying and understanding what the men are saying and actually shutting the fuck up long enough for the man to actually explain, they will they will be quick to go listen to a female that doesn't have no relationship, has no man, is a single is a single baby mama, and um has all this disdain because she got pregnant by the very type of men that she hates. They'll be quick to do that, but they won't be quick enough to say anything about um they won't be quick enough to actually listen to what the men are actually really saying. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be too busy listening to Kendra G, no, not Kendra G, Cynthia G, Tanya TKO, um, all these other struggle channels and shit. And I know I can't be talking about nobody's struggle channel, but damn it, I got, I still got better protection than what the broads got. But, um, they're always listening to women that have nothing to offer anybody, and those women will set them up for failure. And the thing about it is this, too, why are you listening to those women when you need to be listening to the men that are actually telling you what they really want and why they're leaving? But I forget, common sense is not too common. It just baffles me to the point where men are constantly saying what they want. Yet, time and time again, what men want really doesn't matter. I don't know, I just find it just disgraceful and there's a lot of and there's a lot of it's not just it's not just black women but it's a lot of women in the west in, uh, in the US that's doing this they'd be, they'd be too busy listening to their ba- they, they single friends rather than listening to their boyfriend or husband and also they'll be quick to listen to a effinist that's miserable as hell but she won't tell you she's miserable because she believes that oh I'm strong and independent I don't need a man um, I'm, I don't have to deal with anybody else's opinions and shit but what they fail to realize is they're uncovered they're uncovered and that leaves them more susceptible to harm see they want they want um conditional um covering. They want to be conditionally covered. They want you to come and put on your, your Superman cape when they're in need, but after they don't need your help no more, you're stuck, they'd be like, why the fuck you near me? Get the fuck away from me. I'm strong and independent. I don't need you. They'd be quick to do that shit. But they won't actually admit that they're miserable. They are... See, a lot of these women... The thing about it is this too. A lot of these women, they're so stressed out. They're stressed out. 
I see it on everybody's face at work. The ones that are single versus the ones that are not. The ones that are married versus the ones that are not married. I can see the I can see the fucking damn stress on their face. They're stressed out. This economy has them stressed out. And the problem is, they don't understand that the reason why they're so stressed out is because they don't have anybody to give a helping hand. But back to the you back to the story at large. This woman is this woman is this woman is used goods. She's proven that she can that she doesn't know how to choose a man properly and is willing to have a baby for a man that's uh, that's DNA should not survive into the next generation. She's proven that she's incapable of choosing the right man. And then she's proven, well, four by four times, she's proven that time and time and time again that she's incapable. And then she's trying to push it off on as men are the problem. But it's just it's just funny to me. It's just real funny to me that a lot of these ladies, when they have some, they have something to say like that. But yet, they're still miserable as hell. They're still talking all that shit, but yet they're miserable. And she's talking about how our kids are business owners and all this stuff. Ma'am, your kids are your kids. Sunny, uh, Stormy Wellington, I guess that's what her name is. Her kids ain't talking to her. Her kids don't even want to be around her. She raised them with that same fucking mentality. And look at what that got her. They got her. They got her kids not even want to be around her or near her. But you're quick to talk about, oh, I'm a business owner. I'm this and that. I'm not. I'm a. I'm a multimillionaire. I'm, I've got a high rise apartment or a high rise condo. Not realizing that you may have that. You may live in that. But you're not. You don't own that. You don't own it. And then also, you may feel like this. Since you don't own it. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. You may feel like this. Since I'm written it out, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm big bossing. No. You don't own it. And then also this, too. All those uh, high bourgeois uh Companies that you're wearing, those lose value. Over, those lose value as soon as you buy them off the damn uh, rack. But stuffs like stuff like time pieces, like Rolls, uh, Rolexes, and uh, Swiss watches, all that stuff. That stuff actually gains value over time. Limited production watches, limited production um, wines, limited production, um, a lot of limited production stuff. A lot of that limited production stuff that gains time, that gains uh, value over time, and a lot of a lot of women don't understand that that stuff is what you need to be actually investing in, investing in stocks, investing in uh, investing in uh, stuff that will gain you value, not a fucking uh, not a fucking Fenty uh, Fenty uh, bag or. Uh, Birkin bag or some shit like that. That shit loses value. And the fact of the matter is that you're touting all this stuff that you have, but yet you're on TikTok when you should be running your quote unquote successful business. You're on TikTok struggling it up, running, running your fucking mouth off on TikTok when you should be online finding a way to make your business even more profitable. And I know I'm talking shit on YouTube, but the thing about this is it too. YouTube is a business too. So you need, so a lot of people need to figure that shit out. At least I'm actually doing the work and I'm actually making the content and putting in their effort to make the content. But she's on TikTok complaining and shit. Like, 
broad, get your ass off of TikTok and go on there and fucking, fucking make your bread. Oh, wait, I forgot. You probably don't have any bread because you're on TikTok. Anyways, I digress. Anyways, more, anyways, guys, like, share, subscribe to the channel, support the podcast on Spotify.com. I will see you guys on the flip side, and thank you guys for listening. Bye, guys.